The next law is an oldie but a goodie. And anybody who's ever attended any of our client seminars has probably heard me talk about the Family and Medical Leave Act. Um, it was amended recently as part of the National Defense Authorization Act. The Family Medical Leave Act is generally a law that says that if you have 50 employees and you have somebody who's worked for you for over a year, that person is going to be entitled to 12 weeks off of unpaid leave for any serious health condition. And that means that if your employee who's been there for over a year is in a car accident and is hospitalized or has a spouse with a debilitating condition or um, has a child or places a child with, it takes a child from foster care, adopts a child, any condition like that, they're going to be entitled to 12 weeks of unpaid leave. So that's the general rule, and of course there's a lot of nuances to it, but that's the general rule about FMLA. Well, before President Bush left office, one of the things he did was he signed the National Defense Authorization Act that amended the Family and Medical Leave Act to say that there are two new criteria for which people are entitled to time off. The first is called extingency leave, and it took me probably six months before I could say that out loud without messing the word up. I don't know where they came up with the word, but it's called extingency leave. An extingency leave is where you have an employee who has either a spouse, a parent, or a child who is being called up from the National Guard or the Reserves to active duty. And that employee will be entitled to time off to take care of anything that has to do to make the leave for their spouse, their child, or their parent possible. It can be uh, visits to see a lawyer. It can be visits to see your CPA. It can be uh, clergy visits. It can be appointments at school to work with your children, um, appointments to make child care arrangements while the spouse is gone. Any of those types of things are going to be okay. The second type of leave is for the employee whose spouse, child, parent, or next of kin returns from the line of duty and is injured and needs care. And where that's the case, the person is entitled to 26 weeks of unpaid leave with full job protection. In other words, they have to be restored to their job when they return. Now, even if you don't have 50 employees, you're still covered by USERA. And USERA is the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Act. And that's a federal law that says that all returning soldiers must be restored to their job. So even if you don't have 50 employees, military leave still applies to you. Of course, under these laws, you're entitled to certain notification before leave occurs, uh, certain notification when leave will, will end. You're entitled to know the duration. Um, under the health care provisions, you're entitled to certain certifications from physicians so you can make sure the leave is legitimate and needed. Uh, so there's a lot of nuances. And in fact, there's about eight new Department of Labor forms that are being completed. Our advice to you is if you do get a request for military leave, talk to an expert, your labor employment lawyer, your human resource manager, somebody of that nature, talk to somebody to find out what you have to do as an employer, what's your right, what is your responsibility um, to make sure that that service person can go on leave and do whatever it is they need to do and then return with full job protection. Okay. And then finally, we're going to talk about the Employee Free Choice Act. And this is not a law yet, this is new legislation, it's being proposed. Um, how many people have heard of this? How many people have heard of it on CNN? Or Good, about half the people. This is something I think we're going to hear more about. And while it's only proposed legislation now, I fully anticipate that it's going to pass in some form or another. We don't know exactly what form it'll pass in, but it will pass in some form or another. In fact, President Obama was a co-sponsor of the Employee Free Choice Act in 2007 and then was a sponsor again in 2008, and he's pledged to sign it in whatever form it does pass. Um, right now, support and opposition of the bill is divided along party lines in Congress, although there are a few people crossing party lines for support or opposition of the bill. But to understand what this act says, let's look at what the National Labor Relations Act currently says, because that's what's going to change. Right now, under the National Labor Relations Act, before a union can be formed in a workplace, two things have to occur. One, you have to have 30% of employees sign an authorization card. And what that authorization card says is I'm authorizing a subsequent secret ballot vote to determine whether there's going to be a union. And so it's kind of like a referendum. You have your authorization card that authorizes the vote if you get enough votes, and then the employer has a large period of time in between. It can be several months 
um, to negotiate with, with employees, to review their compensation and benefits, to review any terms and conditions of employment, to determine whether it's necessary to go to the secret ballot election. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, if it is, a secret ballot election is held. If the employer and the employees can't reach a result for a collective bargaining agreement in 42 days, an arbitrator comes in and sets the terms and conditions of employment. And those terms and conditions can be hiring terms, um, demotion terms, promotion terms, pension, benefits, wages, like that. So the, the concern about this law is that there's no opportunity for a secret ballot election, and that can put a lot of pressure on employees. If somebody, a union steward, for example, came up and said, employee, I want you to sign this card, and the employee has to sign it or refuse to sign it right in front of that person, there's no opportunity for privacy. So um, it's something that I think we should all really be watching. And again, if you have an issue, let your congressperson know, because they're going to be voting on this. And um, it, it should be coming up sooner rather than later, because it has been a hot topic through this legislative session.